Mrs. Hicks says she's been with her husband for half her life, but if she finds out he's cheated, she'll be going into the second half without him. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, the case of Hicks v. Hicks. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. You may be seated. Mr. and Mrs. Hicks, you've been together for 17 years. You've been married for six years. Although you have no children together, you have two children total. You each have a child from a previous relationship. Yet you've been in each other's lives enough that we're talking about a family here. Am I correct, Mrs. Hicks? Yes. Mrs. Hicks, why don't you tell me why we're in divorce court today? Um, we're here today because, I mean, I love my husband. Ever since I seen his sexy chocolate skin, I was hooked. <laughs> um, but we've been through a lot. I mean, we've been homeless. There is a lack of romance. And more recently, I think he's been cheating. I mean, if he's been cheating with me, um, I'm, ready, I'm ready to sign a divorce paper. You actually brought divorce papers to court today. Yes. Mr. Hicks, Mrs. Hicks said, okay, now, yeah. let's see what happens in this court today. But I want to hear from you. What do you say, sir? I really love my wife, uh... I'm, I'm really trying to save her marriage because uh, she's definitely my, my better half. But she's been around me through so much stuff. My father just died two and a half weeks ago. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And my mother died almost immediately after we got married. I understand that very much. She was all right to much. be like, to let it go. I lost my mom within six months of getting married to the love of my life. And I felt the same way, that she had blessed that mm -hmm. relationship. So... Mr. Hicks, Mrs. Hicks, I believe that there's some stakes in the ground here. Let's see if we can be solution-oriented and see if there's still something left in this very long time that you all have been together. Why don't you take me back to when you first met and you met that dark, sexy, chocolate skin yeah, and then um, how we got to this point? We met at work and, you know, we started talking when we were at work. It just so happens his mom had gotten really sick during that period of time when I had first met him, and she was rushed to the hospital. And I literally left work. I was like, you know, this job really don't mean more than your mom. So I literally left work, and since then, he knew, like, I'm really here for him. And then decided to get married. Um, but you say that you all have had some ups and downs. I know that at one point you even were homeless, correct? Yes, uh, we were homeless, living out of a car, in, the, in and out of hotels. Um, he's really bad with money, money issues. What do you mean, money issues? Give me some examples. So he had was on the road, he was a truck driver, and all of a sudden he just bought some gold teeth. Little fronts. Um, and it, like the, he had them for about two weeks. I actually submitted a picture. I'd uh, like to see that. <laughs> Okay, first of all, that looks crazy. You look like a vampire with gold teeth. Okay. Did you say that there was a point where you lived in your car for a minute? Yeah. And in and out of hotels? Uh-huh. And, and, like, it was spending like that. You know, he had him for two weeks. Mr. Hicks, what was that about? Uh, I was on the road, and, and I did buy them. But it wasn't even like they were really that expensive. What do you consider... That expensive. A hundred bucks or something like that. And, with nothing crazy. and that hundred bucks could have gotten an extra couple of nights in a hotel, I can guarantee it. Um, yeah, it could have. Mm -hmm. That could have definitely helped. And then you might not have had to be in a car. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I no, guess not so. I guess. I, I, yeah, I yeah, I mean, that's just called just using good common sense. Yeah. What was going on with you that you thought that was a smart thing to do, sir? I really just wanted the, the fronts when mm -hmm. I was seeing them. I didn't think it was that big of a deal because it was only a hundred bucks. That's the not the only life thing, changing. though, Your Honor. Along with the frivolous spending, he gambles. And it's not really that I have a problem with gambling, but I think he has a gambling addiction because he'll spend money that was supposed to be set aside. Give me a for, for instance. So, for instance, um, more recently, we were going to buy a car. So, right now, we're renting a car. We went to the dealership. We had all the money, but we thought we had our paperwork correct and it didn't go through. So, they were like, when we come back to work, we'll get that paperwork. That was in about three to four days. By the time we got there, we had went back to the casino and he had spent all that money that was a down payment for the car. So by the time that two, three days came, we did we couldn't purchase the car. Okay, now that does not make any sense whatsoever. So now you are continuing to pay to rent a car. Mm -hmm. Instead of money you're paying is going for either a lease that you're owning. Right. Because it's it's we're paying four hundred dollars a week. So it'll be four hundred dollars a month. I'm paying four times as much. 
Okay, tag your it, Mr. Hicks. Well, I do gamble a little bit, but before my mother passed, that she went to the casino a lot. It was like something that we did together. So now that I go to the casino, now it's like I sort of can deal with my my situation a little bit better. So it reminds me of my mother. I and can it, guarantee like you I that don't... in addition to you and your mother going to the casino, you and your mother have had conversations about what a responsible man is. I can guarantee it. I never met we her. We have. We definitely have. But I think you all need to sit down and do a real financial plan and say, this is how much money we have coming in the house. Mm -hmm. This is how much money we can allocate for frivolous fun. But this is the money that stays in the community pot to take care of our obligations. That should be the goal of every family, okay? Yeah. That and keep your daughter off the pole. Those are the two goals, okay? <laughs> Ooh, so, ma'am, I understand that one of the big issues is your disappointment in the connection that you all have. Yeah, I mean, I do just was safe. But take me out, do something special, um, give me flowers, you know? Like, you, it don't have to be... A When's the last road? time he gave you flowers? Two days ago. Because we were coming here? Because we were coming here. So in 17 years, I got a bouquet of roses because we were coming here. That's not what I did. She's been asking me for it, but... For I... 17 years? She ne <laughs> no, it isn't like she never got flowers. It's like it's limited time. Prior to two days ago, when was the last time you gave her flowers? Um, maybe five, six years, maybe, something like that. Corey, when's the last time you gave your wife flowers? Roses are lilies every Friday, Your Honor. <laughs> Kill me. But, that, that, but, but I think... Can I say something? Because I think flowers are, are frivolous gifts. I feel like... Just like the flowers I just gave her, they're gonna be dead when we get home. It's like... Just like uh, the $100 gold rims. They're not in your mouth anymore. Exact, exactly. But at the end of the day, it's like I do other things that... Is, but the other things don't speak her love language. Because you're speaking Spanish and she speaks French. What makes you think he's cheating? He had said something about having a conversation with a woman. He's even left her a voicemail. I, I want to hear the he... voicemail. We friends first, right? <laughs> friends. <laughs> That's a little too much laughter. A little too much friendly. <laughs> friendly. Hey, hey, hey. She needs to have outward signs okay. of your effect. I feel like she's painting a picture that isn't entirely correct. I feel like she plans what she has going on. And I'm and I'm that type of guy. I say, uh, what do you want to do for Valentine's Day? And she says, well, I would like to go get something to eat, and I'd like to go do this, and I'd like to go do that. And I'd be like, well, how much is it going to be? It's going to be $300. $300. And I guess that's not as romantic. It isn't like it doesn't get done. She just sort of plans her happiness. Well, that's because, because you're not planning it for her. And I know that. that I know that I have to do that. That's more. why you're in divorce court. That's why I'm because in, court. in a couple's <laughs> relationship, although we are individually responsible for our happiness, yeah. your partner should have a desire to make you happy. Oh, that's... I, I, right, and that, and, and that... Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of why whenever the, the cheating allegations and, and things like that start to happen, it made me look at, oh, well, you're n you're not really that affectionate. Or, or, you know what I mean? Like... What makes you think he's cheating? He had said something about having a conversation with a woman. Um, and before, there were rumors, you know, from his family. Explain what you mean. When we first got together, and there were, like, people in his family that would say, oh, well, he had so many women, and he has all this, and I'm like... Indicating oh. he was, like, for the streets? Yeah. Yeah, basically, indicating. Um, didn't really... You know, I know these people, they that really didn't rumor. like me. That was just rumor. I'm not right. assuming that it would right. happen. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, I, I didn't think, you know, um, we got married, whatever. You know, that's all in the past. Um, and then he has a phone conversation with some woman. Now, mind you, the issue really was that, okay, this is not somebody that's from your childhood. So Who is the woman? Okay, so he frequents uh, a blood bank. He goes to the blood bank twice a week. You know, they give him money, and he actually said he started it really whenever his mom was sick and stuff like that. So it wasn't really that big of a deal. Okay, so you are a frequent visitor to the blood bank. I and love. somebody that works at the blood bank? Yes. You have become friendly with that person. Is that correct? Yes. And it's a woman? Yes. To the point where they're talking and texting. 
for about six months without even my knowledge. Manji, they're go he's going there every two weeks. You see her every two weeks. What's the point of having a phone? You Mr. Know? Hicks, who is the lady? Just a person who takes your blood at the blood bank. You know what? I've been going to the heart doctor. Mm -hmm. I have never texted him <laughs> outside of change my medicine or increase my he, medicine. I have never... He's this is a man who saved my left life. Her voicemail. Like, because of the relationship... There, you sent me the voicemail? The voicemail. I so want to hear the hear... voicemail. Man, well, as always, man, it's always good talking when I go to work or whatnot. But, real... You already know what it is, man. He's a dope person. Everything will be... Everything is going to be, so... Have a good day at work, man. You know? Keep me posted either way, man. Like I said. So we friends first, right? <laughs> we friends, that's, that's it. Friends, yeah, friends. Friends. <laughs> friends. <laughs> that's a little too much laughter. A little too much friendly. <laughs> friendly. Like, hey, hey. what type of friend is hey, that? Hey, hey. That you're what? calling her at 6 o'clock in the morning. This is at 6 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Why are hey. supposed to be on the road? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Let, exactly. Let, let, can I defend the situation? Yeah, you better. Mr. Hicks, can we put this to rest with yeah, the lie detector results? Oh, you can. Mr. Yarbrough, we asked Mr. Hicks, did he have sex with the woman at the blood bank? Mr. Hicks' answer was no. And what did the results indicate? The polygraph examination revealed... The message was never sent to the girl, first off. That's number one. Clearly, uh, because you made a mistake and it went... Well, how, how did I, I get it? Because when I listened to it, I thought it sounded crazy and it wasn't the type of message that I was trying to, to give to her. At the time of me making the message, I wasn't on the road. I was drinking. This is from her going in my phone and finding a message... He deleted messages. ...that he, never got sent out. He deleted out. messages. So, you were drinking feeling a little buzz, feeling good, right? No. I wasn't, like, drunk. I'm not going to sit here... No, 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 I'm not I talking about drunk, but I'm drunk. telling you, you thought of the blood bank lady <laughs> while you were feeling exactly. relaxed? Exactly. No, it... That isn't... Uh, think about it. Yeah, think you about it. You're the one you who provided drinking. me with the information. Because I had just had a conversation with her where she had... Not at 6 o'clock in the morning. No, you didn't. Situation. No, you didn't. Hold no. on one second, Miss Hicks. Because <laughs> I'm about to go back to being a prosecutor. Mr. Hicks, come on now. She had, quote, made it a situation. Did she say or do something that made you feel it was necessary to qualify your relationship? Because that is what the message seems to indicate, like, we friends. We, we, we just friends now, okay? We friends. Did the lady indicate to you that she was interested in something more than friends? No, she was upset. About? I, I had no idea. The no. fact that you know that much about this lady, and she the blood bank lady, tells me that it's an inappropriate relationship. I, I mean, I even tried to talk to her. <laughs> you shouldn't know that much about her. He tried to have me talk to her after the fact, about two years later, and she did say that they didn't do anything. I was like, so you're, so you're saying my husband had cheated on me? She was like, oh, well, I ain't say that. You gotta ask him about that. And I was like, what, what do you mean? So, and then he wants me to believe her. I was like, so you want me to believe that she's saying that she, she didn't cheat with you, but she, she cheated with somebody else? I'm like, she's not credible for you. She <laughs> is neither a product of nor a factor in the marriage between Mr. and Mrs. Hicks. Make her a non-entity. I did. As a matter of fact, the only reason I want to hear about the blood bank lady is because there have been a lie detector yes. test. I, I just want the result. Like, Mr. Hicks, it's... can we put this to rest with yeah, the lie detector results? Oh, you can. You saying that with a lot of confidence, sir? Super confident. Absolutely. That's what I want to hear because you willingly submitted to a polygraph examination performed by John Yarborough, certified polygraph examiner. And I would like to ask our witness to join us, please. Because I think... We can resolve all of the other issues, but trust is one we can't resolve until we put this to rest. Fair enough? Correct. Mr. Yarbrough, thank you for joining us. Please state your name and your professional affiliation. 
My name is John Yarbrough. I'm a certified polygraph examiner. Uh, I'm a member of the APA, the American uh, Polygraph Association, and I've performed over 300 varying polygraphs, including law enforcement, fire department, infidelities, wrongfully accusations. I find you qualified as an expert in polygraph examinations and eligible to provide services for this court. Mr. Hicks willingly submitted to a polygraph examination performed by you, and you asked him three questions, sir, correct? That is correct. The first question, Ms. Yarbor, we asked Mr. Hicks, did he have sex with the woman at the blood bank? That is correct. What was Mr. Hicks' answer? Mr. Hicks' answer was no. And what did the results indicate? The polygraph examination revealed that there was no deception noted to that question. Means he told the truth. Correct. Question number two. Mr. Yarborough, we asked Mr. Hicks, did he have any sexual contact with the woman who worked at the blood bank? That is correct. What was Mr. Hicks' answer? Mr. Hicks answered no. And what did the results indicate? The polygraph examination revealed that there was no deception to that question. Which means he answered truthfully. That is correct. <laughs> There's a third question. What's the third question? <laughs> you got another one? I thought I don't remember being that many, honestly. There's a third. We asked Mr. Hicks, since he's been married, has he had any sexual contact with anyone that his wife does not know about? That is correct. What was Mr. Hicks' answer? Mr. Hicks answered no. Exactly. And what did the results indicate? The polygraph examination revealed no deception to that question. You're great. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, this is what I'm trying to tell my wife. It never, ever was about somebody else. It was literally just bad judgment on my part. Like, she knows I'm real black and white. Okay. I love my wife. And Mr. Yarborough well, did not burn you. Mr. Yarborough... Set me free. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Hicks, is there something you'd like to say to your husband? I love you. I'm sorry. I mean, honestly. If he would have been giving me flowers and stuff, because that's literally what I asked for in the beginning, Don't and he never me. did it until now, like, I feel like you are the reason. He's literally the reason. He, he made me feel bad during that time. Excuse me, Corey. Hand that tissue box to Mr. Hicks. Mr. Hicks? I'm sorry, sir. Go comfort your wife. Yeah. No I don't want you to be sad, but... Mr. Hicks, I am so glad that these polygraph results came out in your favor. I think that if you could just sit down and work out that financial plan that we discussed earlier, communicate in a way that speaks her love language, if you know what I mean, I gotta learn French. Yes, you do. <laughs> Need to learn some French. Right? A little bit of French. I did buy flowers, though. <laughs> she liked them, too, when I gave them to her. I seen it. Ma'am, you brought them. divorce papers to court. Yeah, I don't need them. They took my lighter or we could... I don't need them. Right? <laughs> I don't need them. Burn them. Corey, will you please retrieve the divorce papers for me? get some warm. That's what we need. We could take this back as well. I didn't even know she had a paper. Where you had that paper? <laughs> See, she was serious. <laughs> I didn't see, and that, and that means a lot. And it's completely filled out. Wait, wait, but it's not signed. <laughs> I did, yes. Yeah, like... She brought them. She didn't sign them. It's always a tell for me. Mm -hmm. She wanted her husband. It does my heart good to know she got her husband. <laughs> We're done here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I told you it wasn't about that. It was really about how you treated me whenever it happened. I told I you from the door that I was telling the truth, though. So. Yeah, well, we ripped up the papers. Yeah, I don't, that was cool. I don't, you know. You shouldn't even have had the papers, though. <laughs> Why you even? I, I don't even understand. I love you, though. Because I was going to leave. Why would she? No. Oh, oh, I mean, I that's the. It don't matter, though. I passed. Right. Good. Yeah. Good made.